On November 23, 2012, in Jacksonville, Florida, 46-year-old Michael Dunn, a white man, shot and killed 17-year-old Jordan Davis, an unarmed black boy at a gas station. Sound familiar? This time, however, the victim was in a Durango SUV with three friends playing music too loudly, which Dunn did not appreciate. Dunn described the music as, quote, thug music, which he promptly told them to turn down. One of the kids did lower the music, but then Davis turned the volume back up and engaged in a verbal argument with Dunn, who reacted to the kid by saying, quote, you're not going to talk to me like that, and then pulled his gun from his glove compartment and began firing into the SUV. Just as the first bullets began to fly, the driver of the SUV plunged the shifter into reverse and rocketed backwards. Even as the kids sped off, Dunn continued to fire at them, both hands on the gun, unloading a total of 10 rounds, two of which fatally hit Davis in the groin and chest. Inexplicably, when Dunn was brought in for police questioning the next day, he lived three hours from where the incident had happened, he told detectives, they defied my orders. What was I supposed to do if they wouldn't listen? Needless to say, he was promptly arrested and later charged with first-degree murder and three counts of attempted murder. Dunn has since invoked the Stand Your Ground statute, claiming that he felt threatened by the kids, who his first lawyer claimed were gang members calling their gang buddies. His girlfriend, at the time of the shooting, who was in the car with him, has denied his claim that he saw a shotgun pointing out of one of the SUV's windows. In addition, during a hearing for Bond in March, Dunn glared, quote, glared at Jordan's father, who was on the verge of pouncing on Dunn. Since the Stanier gun law went into effect eight years ago in Florida, self-defense killings have more than tripled in the state, with similar, similar results in other states that have adopted comparable laws. The legitimacy of Dunn's Stand Your Ground defense hinges on him being given the go-ahead by a judge, not a jury. Dunn's lawyer doesn't even have to prove there was a threat to Dunn, to Dunn just that Dunn believed a threat existed. Thankfully, the state has a large number of witnesses who are ready to refute Dunn's claim that he felt threatened by the boys. The fact remains that this insane law exists, and that a man like Dunn can use it to allegedly try to get off for shooting at four young men and killing one of them for playing music too loudly.